What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So let's talk Pixel 6a. I feel like every year, this is the Pixel device most people talk about. It's Google's affordable, but still feature-packed mid-ranger. It tends to take most everything from the flagship phone from the year before and package it all together in a similar, but smaller, more budget-friendly form factor. And depending on where you live, I think that once again, this is the best value Android device you can get for your money. Here in the US, our mid-tier Android options are few and far between. There's the Samsung A53, the S21 FE, I guess, a couple awful Motorola Moto devices, and that's kind of it, really. By default, this would be the best choice for well under $500, but it's not just a last resort. It's head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to things like the software experience and features, the updates and support, the hardware, the camera. Now, it's not perfect. Google could have added a couple of things here and there that I think would have made even more people happy. And if you live anywhere else, in the world besides the US, this phone might not be available to you for starters and also has a tougher time competing against the likes of Xiaomi Redmi devices, Realme, OnePlus, Huawei, Honor, but specifically for the US market, this, in my opinion, is likely the best phone out there. So in this video, I'm going to fill you in on everything you need to know about the Pixel 6a. We'll talk about the good, the bad, everything in between. I'll show you some picture samples and performance benchmarks, along with some apps and features and things that I like most on this phone. And speaking of apps, one of the most important ones I've been using recently is Trend Micro's Premium Security Suite, which has been keeping my personal information safe on all of my devices. Between working and learning from home, to shopping, bill paying, and talking with friends, our entire lives are all online. Because of that, there's a never-ending threat from hackers and other malicious entities trying to steal all of our online information. Trend Micro helps combat those threats with their Premium Security Suite, a comprehensive security solution designed to monitor all your devices, up to 10 at once, including PC, Mac, smartphones, and and tablets. Trend Micro's premium security suite works 24-7, blocking dangerous websites and scanning the dark web for your personal info, monitoring your Wi-Fi network for threats, acting as a simple and secure password manager, and it even has a built-in VPN to ensure your privacy both at home and on public Wi-Fi networks. And that's my favorite feature, and it beats having to pay for some other VPN separately. Trend Micro also actively monitors data breaches, something that seems to happen way too often, and can alert you if it finds that your username, email, password, or other info was compromised by some other company. Company. Not to scare you, but chances are some of your personal information may already be out there. So I highly recommend giving Trend Micro's Premium Security Suite a try in order to combat those threats and keep yourself safe. If you're interested, there's a link to the Trend Micro website down below, along with a discount code that saves you a whole bunch of money on a subscription. And thanks so much to Trend Micro for keeping me protected and for sponsoring this video. Now, the first element that was sort of brought over from last year's Pixel 6 flagships for the Pixel 6a, obviously, is the design. And while the design looks almost alien last year, I I actually feel like it's grown on me a bit. And with some of the huge camera modules we see today and crazy RGB gaming phones that have come out recently, the Pixel 6a almost looks tame by comparison now. Material-wise, it actually looks nicer than it's built. The rear housing is plastic, but it's the closest thing that mimics glass that I've seen yet. And it feels thicker and sturdier too. The sides and edges are aluminum. And that's very obvious. It gives the phone some nice weights. There's also this speckle and shine to the material. It's sort of greenish to match the phone. It's really nice. And it's also sturdy and durable, IP67 water and dust resistant, but it is missing some of those other physical elements that would have made it more well-rounded, like wireless charging, for example. I don't think adding that would have been a big ask. There's also no more headphone jack. And with Google launching now a few different wireless Pixel Buds, I'd imagine they'd want people to buy those versus some included wired earbuds, but it doesn't make it any less inconvenient. One thing I like in particular about the Pixel 6a is its size. At 6.1 inches, it's arguably quite small by today's standards. It's the smallest Pixel device overall from the last few years, and compared to like Samsung's A-series lineup, for example, which are all like 6.5 inches and bigger, this feels like it's a noticeably smaller alternative for those who want that. And in the hand, it's compact, it's comfortable, it's easy to reach and stretch and tap everything. There should be more smaller phones out there nowadays, and this is a great example of that. My only other slight criticism with the phone's physical features just has to do with those thick, chunky screen borders. With an 83% screen to body ratio, I wouldn't say that you're getting all screen, especially with that bottom chin. And from a company like Google, I think they could deliver a sleeker, slimmer screen border. The only other physical element to this phone that I need to talk about 
is the fingerprint sensor. And this, in my experience, unfortunately is just not that great. The Pixel 6s last year had similarly slow fingerprint setups, and migrating that same in-display setup on over to this phone, in my opinion, was a bad move. I don't know why it takes such a long tap and hold to get into the phone each and every time, but it's the biggest pain point I experience day in and day out when I use this thing. And whether it's beefed up security or a poor fingerprint sensor, it's something that should have been addressed or changed, or otherwise just left alone from the 5A with a regular old button fingerprint setup instead. Speaking of the display, the 6.1 inch OLED screen on this phone really looks good. And at the full HD 2400 by 1080 resolution, it's about as sharp as you ever want, especially at this size. You get some 429 pixels per inch. To me, you get two out of the three major screen features you'd want. It's a bold, bright, and very colorful looking display, and the off-axis viewing is ridiculous. There's no fade, no blur, no drop off in color or brightness. No matter how you look at the screen or how you tilt the phone, it's gonna look good. It's not like super ultra bright with outdoor viewing, but it's better than average and certainly good enough for most instances. You do get a bit of a brightness boost outside. The thing that's missing here, as I'm sure you've seen everyone else mention, is a high refresh rate option. 90 hertz at least, or maybe even 120. That's a feature you will see on even some cheaper Android devices nowadays, and it's a surprise surprise omission on this phone this year. Is it a deal breaker? No, I don't think so. But I do think a phone like this is aimed at a more tech savvy buyer, the Android purists, the Pixel fanatics, and the intended audience definitely expects a high refresh rate display, I'd say. Will the average person notice or care? Probably not. And this phone is fast and smooth in general. It's just the fact that elsewhere, a feature like that, high refresh rate display, is more or less standard. And it's surprising to not have it included this year on the Pixel 6a. The out loud listening experience on this phone is also really good. You do get two speakers, one at the bottom and the secondary speaker hidden in that earpiece slit up top. And considering how much I personally value a good speaker setup, I was super happy with how this phone sounds. It's loud, it's crisp, there's not a whole lot of distortion. It's a great speaker setup for sure. <laughs> So in my opinion, while most of the standard stuff with this phone is perfectly fine, the two areas where the Pixel 6a excels most are with the software experience and the camera. And these are likely still the two biggest reasons why people might choose a Pixel device to begin with. Inside, Google brought over their in-house Tensor chipset from last year's flagship phones to this year's Pixel 6a. Paired with six gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, that's going to be plenty for most everything you want this phone to do. The only real downside is no SD card slots and no other configuration options either so you'll have to be okay with 128 gigs which seems like a lot, but for some people I realize it's never enough. The processor especially I think is more powerful than what most people could fully utilize day in and day out. And for Google's first go at sort of an in-house chipset, I think there maybe was some concerns about the viability, but from my own experience, this device continues to be the smoothest, fastest, and most capable Android device you can get for the money. That was the case with last year's flagship Pixel 6, and it continues to be the case here. Personally, I haven't experienced any pressing performance issues, and I really wouldn't expect to. These are practically brand new flagship components still, and a device that costs half as much. Not quite as fast and as well optimized as the newest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but pretty close. The software experience as well is one of the top reasons people flock to Pixel devices year after year. And not just because Google continues to innovate with some really cool, unique, and very useful features, but this is an Android device that is also a great long-term investment. And to be brutally honest, that's not something you can say about a lot of other Android phones. Pixel devices are not just the first to get Android up Updates, they're the phones that are often supported the longest too, with major updates for three years and security patches for five years. And I know a number of people who are more than happy to use a Pixel device even longer than that, especially longer than say Samsung smartphones, for example. Now I obviously filmed this review and used the Pixel 6a the last 30 days or so before the official Android 13 update launched. And I'll have an updated video specifically talking about Android 13 here soon, but this OS experience year after year delivers a fast, responsive feel 
a great UI, plenty of interesting and useful Google specific add-ons. And just from my own experience, it's why I also prefer a Pixel phone most often over other Android devices. Pixel phones I feel have migrated from that stock Android classification to almost a Google specific ecosystem. And this continues to be one of the best Android experiences you can get. One feature that was really heavily touted with the Pixel 6a this year was its battery life and longevity. And there's a couple different things here to unpack. The 4410 milliamp battery inside this phone isn't super massive. It's a small device, so you can only go so big. The average day-to-day -day use for me has yielded about 10 or so hours of screen on time, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. In my experience, it's not as good as the Pixel 5a was. Whether that's because because of the more powerful Google Tensor chip or some other factor, I'm not entirely sure, but I've just found across the board that this phone can't put in as many hours as its predecessors. The other side of this too is that Google's advanced battery saving features like extreme battery saver mode, which theoretically give this phone 72 hours of battery life, can definitely be a factor as long as you don't want to do anything else with this phone besides like make a single phone call. I think with a combination of regular usage and some of those extra battery saving options. This phone can be an all-day device and then some, but it just seems like longevity is something that was sacrificed. Aside from the software experience, like I said, the other major feature that makes these Pixel phones so good is the camera, specifically for pictures. And once again, the Pixel 6a is no doubt the best picture taker on the market in this price range. But in my opinion, it's been top dog for a number of years now. And because of that, Google seems to have been content offering really no significant changes. The hardware on the Pixel 6a is the same as what was on the Pixel 2. Seriously, the 12.2 megapixel main lens is Sony's IMX sensor that's been reused time and time again, paired with a 12 megapixel 114 degree ultra wide. And up front, there's an eight megapixel selfie shooter that isn't pushing the boundaries on specs either. But the thing is, even with seemingly old hardware, this phone does see some improvements with image processing and speed due to Google's Tensor chip. And inside the camera app, you're not gonna see much that's changed. A handful of the same modes and features like like portrait, night sight, photosphere, Google Lens. You can shoot 4K video up to 60 FPS, super slow-mo up to 240. There's no crazy 8K modes or cinematic features or any of that. Really, for most people, this is just gonna be, I think, mainly a point and shoot and be done sort of camera setup. For your average everyday pictures, like I said, that tensor chip processes the images faster. You get more detail, better dynamic range. It doesn't look over-processed though. Everything just looks sharp and even and colorful but not overdone. The images aren't quite as good as last year's Pixel 6 flagships, but compared to like a Samsung A-series again, or any of the global Android brands, this phone shoots pictures that are just miles ahead of the rest. I don't think Google changed anything hardware-wise or even feature-wise, because they simply didn't need to. On mid-range phones, the camera tech has improved overall, but not as quickly or as drastically as a flagship device. With the Pixel 6a, these images are very much flagship caliper, but they've been that way for a number of years now. And it's a combination of the Pixel being very, very good, and also the competition just not being able to match it. For aspiring photographers or everyday folks who just want the best pictures of their pets and their kids, there's no better picture taker for the money than the Pixel 6a. Overall, the Pixel 6a continues the tradition of Google offering the best Android device for the price specifically for those of us here in the US who really have no other choice. But even if we did have a handful of other mid-range Android phones here, I'd still pick this one every single time. It's gonna offer the best software experience, the best support, the best camera, and plenty of other good stuff that makes it an incredible value. Sure, a 90 hertz display, headphone jack, and better fingerprint sensor would have taken this phone up another notch or two. But as it is, I think the Pixel 6a, once again, is an incredibly good option for the money. But what do you guys think about the Pixel 6a? Let me know your thoughts and experience if you have one in the comments down below. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.